Ash, from, from just, just a, a scientific standpoint, I mean, is there, wh why is it that prostate seems to have this predilection for bone? I mean, what is it about that? So, so I can't speak with huge expertise here, but there are, um, there, when you look at the, the chemotactic molecules on, you know, on prostate cancer, they do tend to be very similar to things that, are, that get expressed with bone remodeling and also to, lymph, to look going to, to lymphatics as opposed to um, the visceral metastasis. The visceral disease is a completely different category. It may have to do more with this neuroendocrine small cell type features. And I think that's why when you look at uh, trial data or you look at your patients, they're fundamentally treated differently. Um, you know, no one knows evolutionarily why there's like, why, you know, SDF and these other factors are expressed on the prostate, but it does make the idea of like, uh, of, of targeting, of targeting the bone particularly, you know, kind of more palpable. And also when we talk about um, disease we can see, um, you know, and, and where the a microcosm of the disease is different than the lone metastasis, I think that, I think there is a difference. If you look at some of the papers that are now using deep sequencing to look at clonal evolution, we see that these metastases are going to these different areas and the, they seem to be educating themselves and then, you know, going out or even back to the, back to the back primary. Back to the primary. Yeah. And so um, having an agent like the radium-223 that can target the, um, that can target the bone niche may actually alter the, the way that the metastatic progression happens. Um, how will we target the soft tissue in the same regard? Is it going to be with like a lutetium labeled PSMA compound? They're doing some of that in Europe. I'm, I'm sort of s skeptical because there's a little bit of a specificity issue there. Um, but, you know, in terms of metastasis directed therapies, can we use something that then alters that process by which the prostate cancer targets its way to the bone? I don't know if that's going to be the solution because if you thought, think about that kind of therapy, it would be something you'd be on chronically to prevent an event from happening, to prevent you know the cells from going from uh, through an EMT transition to get out into the bloodstream, become more stem-like, be more mesenchymal-like, and then this you know MET transition back into the bone. I don't think that would work, but perhaps doing something that exposes the cells out of its microenvironment to make it more susceptible to therapeutics, you know, causing that. Uh, causing that transition from 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 uh, mesenchymal to more you know epithelial, so it could be susceptible to a therapeutic agent. That's an interesting uh, strategy. People like Dr. Pienta have been trying to explore it, um, but there hasn't been that much headway yet. Maybe there's more to come. You know this. Uh, you know I, again, I think what's interesting is that you hear these radiation oncologists all the time. I think it's a great concept. This this scopal. Ab -sco <laughs> the, scopal the, effect. This abscopal effect, right, where they radiate, you get antigen spread. So to me, I think we're, you know, we can actually talk about this as, okay, so does that open up the world for the use of radium-223 to, to take you, advantage of the abscopal effect and, and then combine it you, with an immunotherapy? There was this, uh, there, I mean, it, I believe in the SOFO effect strongly. There was a, you know, in the melanoma space, this great case report, probably maybe the most famous case report of our time, this post report where the uh, lady was on IPI therapy but progressing, had a MET that was near her spine, they radiated stereotactically, and suddenly there's regression of METs in the lungs, METs in the mediastinal, all, all that stuff. And in fact, in all disclosure, I have a clinical trial that's ongoing for metastatic prostate cancer using cryoablation to the, the scopal effect with PD-1. There's a lot of interest in radium-223 combining it with a less topic, a toxic immunotherapy. And so with, I think there's an um, interest in anti-PD-1 therapy with radium-223. I'm not sure, is that trial off the ground yet, or is it? I don't know that it's launched, but there's definitely, that's moving forward. And, and, I, and, I, and by concept, I think that, you know, particularly with an immunotherapy that has some toxicity, but nowhere near the pneumonitis or colitis of anti-C24 therapy, this is the sort of type of pilot that we, we have to explore, and I think combining it with something like radium makes a lot of sense. Do, do prostate cancer cells express a lot of pdl one no. So that's actually one of the challenges, right? Yeah. And uh, prostate has been sort of the orphan child when you look at, at immune oncology agents, right? With the epilumumab data was a negative trial, right? And we have right now looking at Nevo and Pembro in the context of prostate cancer, and the data so far doesn't appear to be that great compared with uh, melanoma, head and neck, lung, and so forth. What is it about the, the, the prostate cancer and the immune sort of uh, infiltrating tumor cells? How are you define those? I, I really don't know, but 
I'm not sure PD-1 therapy by itself or IO therapy by, it, by themselves independently will actually really actually pan out to be truly effective in prostate cancer. And I think to your point, you know, I think that is far more excitement to do combination trials looking at radiation plus uh, IO therapy, where it is BRACI plus a PD-1 or it is external beam plus a PD-1 because of the, uh, uh, the comments that you just made. Uh, with RIAM 23, one of the biggest challenges, again, is, is that we truly don't understand how it works, right? And where it is, is that transition from epithelial to mesenchymal? I, I really don't know, but it's pretty powerful to know that a big fat molecule compared with the old beta meters can actually target your bone and actually drastically lead to survival improvement, you know? I, I think that most of us are still inquiring why is that the case, why that is the case, but I don't, I'm not sure that we truly know, you know? Uh, and one of the challenges with RAM 2 3 again, uh, is, is just that lack of science, right? Uh, no different than CPT, right? We know CPT, yeah, makes people live longer, yeah, but, but the, what is the immunogenicity, how it does it, still not really well understood.